In this video, we're going to talk about downloading the jQuery library and specifying it in our HTML code. There are two ways to specify jQuery in your HTML code. One way is through something called a CDN. That means Content Delivery Network. And jQuery has become wildly popular over the last five to six years. Because of that, jQuery's library is hosted by Google, Microsoft, several of the very large companies. And so you can actually point to one of these servers. We're not gonna do that until later. So just keep in mind that's something you can do, but we're gonna do that in a later video. We're gonna do it the old fashioned way, and that is point to the library locally. So what does that mean? We need to download the source from jQuery's website. So I've provided a link to the jQuery website in the information section of this video. So what I'd like you to do is go to the jQuery website. And what I want you to do is click on this download query link right here. And then you're going to get this page that has two different jQuery versions. We're going to use this version right here. Download the uncompressed development jQuery. 1.11.3. So you want to select that link and download it. Now these files are not huge. So you really, you should download all of them, even the jQuery 2.x series, so that you have them for reference in the future if you need them. Now the main difference between 1.x and 2.x is that 2.x drops support for Internet Explorer 6, 7, and 8. So that's why we're going to use 1.x, and that's why I use 1.x, because I don't think it's a good idea to ever drop older browser versions. In fact, you'd be surprised how many people are still using Internet Explorer 8. My mom still uses it. So that's why we're going to use 1.x. But in reality, there's just very little difference between the two. It's just that 2.x drops some of the older browser versions. Now, if you want to use 2.x in this series, feel free to do that. This series will support any version of jQuery that you want to use. So that being said, go ahead and download the development jQuery 1.11.3. And once you have that, I want you to create a folder called website. You can call it whatever you want. And then in there are two files, as we've done in every series. We're going to have an index.html and a CSS style sheet. By the way, I will provide the source for all of these videos in the information section of this video. So again, there will be paste links so you can go ahead and get all of this code. And then what you want to do is open up the jQuery source that you downloaded. And in this case, I downloaded both of them. And so I've got the 1.11.3 and the 2.1.4. But we're going to use the 1.11 version. And we're going to use the development version. Now you'll notice, well, let me drag this over here a little, that the size of this file is 278 kilobytes. Now if we go to the production version, you'll notice that it's 94 kilobytes. So this is the same exact version as the development version. It's just a compressed version because you wanna have this file as small as possible when you go to production. You don't want the user to have to download large files. So this is just a compressed version. But again, we're gonna use the development version because we're, going to, because we're really in a testing phase or a learning phase if you wanna think of it like that. So this is the version we will use. So what I want you to do is just copy and paste that because you want to keep the original version in your library. So we'll just copy and paste that right into our website project folder. There we go. Now let's go ahead and close this folder out and let's go ahead now and open our HTML file. And we're going to be using Notepad++, just like we did in the JavaScript series. If you watched my JavaScript series, you will know how to use this IDE. And I hope you did watch my JavaScript series because it is very relevant to the jQuery series. If you are watching this series for the very first time and have not watched my other series, you should go out and download Notepad++. All you need to do is put Notepad++ in the Google search engine and it will come up. It's very, very easy to download and very quick to install. So let's go ahead and edit our HTML document. And here is the HTML source that we will be using in the next video. And again, I will put this in the information section. So now we need to point to that jQuery library. Where do we do that? Well, if you watched my JavaScript series in video 48, I mentioned that we need to point to the JavaScript library. Now remember that the jQuery library is really a JavaScript library. That's why I'm calling it a JavaScript library. And you probably will notice that it has a .js extension. And you will remember that in episode 48, I said that we need to point to the JavaScript library right before the closing body tag. And it's the same reason why we're doing this here. We want the entire web page to load before we load our JavaScript library. 
because that will increase the performance of the load time. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste the line right here. And there you can see, as always, we use the script element tag, we use the source attribute, and we simply point to our jQuery slash JavaScript library. It's that simple. By the way, it actually, let's minimize this. You'll notice, of course, and you probably already know this by now, that the name we used in the source attribute matches the name in our folder. Also, we don't have to specify a directory here because the library is in the same folder as our index.html. Okay, that's going to do it for this video. In the next video, we will get started with jQuery. See you guys then.